بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم Welcome to this Analog Designer's Toolbox ADT tutorial In this tutorial, we will examine the threshold voltage of 7 nanometer fin fat transistors We will start by a 7 nanometer low VT in most device We will extract the threshold voltages at two values of VDS At VDS equal 10 millivolt in the linear region and at VDS equal 0.8 volt in the saturation region And then we will compare the difference between VT extracted at these two values. And then the whole procedure will be repeated for a two transistor stack and for super low VT devices. Let's start with the first part where we will extract VT at a VDS of 10 millivolts. As a quick review, this is the MOSFET longer channel model. As we have a small VDS of 10 millivolts, we will be operating in the triode region and the drain current will be given by this equation. So this is the triode equation. Since VDS is very small, we can actually neglect this term in the equation. So the equation becomes linear. And as you know, V overdrive is simply VGS minus V threshold. So this is the equation of a straight line. If we plot VGS on the x-axis, ID would be a straight line like this, where the x-intercept is the threshold voltage. The derivative of the drain current is the transconductance, GM. So since this is a straight line, the slope is constant, so GM should be constant, it should be independent of VGS. Of course, this is our simplified long channel model, so let's go to ADT and see the actual device characteristics. So I opened an empty project in ADT. I will go to the Device Explorer interface, which enables you to plot device characteristics in a powerful and efficient way. It will ask me if I want to load lookup tables, AUTs, I will click yes. I will select the lookup table of the low VT in most device, which I want to characterize. I will click open here. The device will be loaded successfully, as we can see here. Here I can have multiple figures. And every figure contains four plots. If I click a plot, its settings show up here on the right. So let's click plot 1A. This is my lookup table. It is characterized at a single temperature and a single corner. I will select VGS for the x-axis and ID for the y-axis. Of course, this is 7 nanometer technology, but as you know, the 7 nanometer is just a marketing name but the actual physical gate length is around 20 nanometer. I will set VDS to 10 millivolts. I will plot the drain current. Then I will select GM. I will append GM to the plot. Now I have my drain current and I have GM, the transconductance. I can maximize the plot like this. As you can see, the drain current is not really linear and the slope, which is the GM, varies a lot with VGS, the slope is not constant. So to get a very rough estimate of VT, let's say that I will linearize my characteristics at the point that has the maximum slope, which is the maximum GM. So I will add a cursor here. I will select a vertical cursor. I will then move my cursor to the point that has the maximum GM, and I will use this point to extract my VT. I can export my plot to the clipboard or to an external file. So this is the characteristics we extracted from ADT. This is our linearized approximation and we want to extract this value. This is the VT we are looking for. As you can see, we have here VGS and this is VT. And the slope is GM equal delta Y over delta X. Delta Y is ID, which we have here. And delta X will be VGS minus VT. So we have GM, we have ID, we have VGS. So we can simply solve this equation for VT and to give us that VT is around 196 millivolts. So let's go to the second part. We will extract VT, but this time at a VDS of 0.8 volts. If we revisit the long channel model, since VDS is quite large, we'll be operating in the saturation region, which is given by this simplified quadratic relation. 
So this is the famous square law. If you plot VGS on the x-axis, ID would be given by this quadratic relation. And of course, this is the threshold voltage, VT. If we take the derivative of ID, we'll get the transconductance, GM, and GM will be linearly dependent on VGS, so this will be our GM. If we take the second derivative of the current, we will take the derivative of GM with respect to VGS, it will be a constant value that is independent of VGS, so this will be the derivative of GM with respect to VGS. Again, this is our simplified long channel model, so let's go to ADT and see the actual device characteristics. So I'll go back to ADT, I will click here on plot 1B, this is plot 1B characteristics. I can import plot 1A characteristics here, as you can see all the settings will be copied from plot 1A. I will change the VDS to 800 millivolts, and I will plot GM, so this is my GM. Next, I want to plot the derivative of GM, so I go here to the advanced Y expression, and here I will write diff gm, which essentially calculates the derivative of gm, and I will append this to my plot. Again, I can maximize my plot here. As you can see, gm is not really a straight line. It varies a lot, and actually it saturates, which indicates that in this region, the drain current is not quadratic versus VGS. It is actually linear versus VGS and the slope of GM is not constant, again, it varies a lot. So as we did in the previous case, let's assume that we will make a linear approximation at the point where the slope peaks here, where we have the maximum slope. So here I will add the cursor, I will add a vertical cursor, and then I will move my cursor to the point that has the maximum slope, and again I can export my figure and do further analysis on it. So like we did the previous time, this is the characteristics I have from ADT. This is my linearized approximation, and I want to extract this value. This is the V threshold I'm looking for. So this is VGS, and we have the slope at this point, so we can write that this derivative of GM with respect to VGS is equal to again delta y over delta x. Delta y is gm itself, and delta x is vgs minus vt. So we have this derivative here, this value, and we have gm delta y here, this value, and we have vgs here, this value. So again, I can solve this equation to calculate vt. And you can simply find that VT is around 125 millivolts. So now we want to compare the difference between these two cases. So we'll find that the threshold voltage is much lower actually at the case of VDS equal 100 millivolts. The shift in the threshold voltage is around 71 millivolts. If you calculate the double coefficient, we'll find that there is around 90 millivolt reduction in V threshold for every one volt change in VDS. We can also see the effect of VDS in the device characteristics. I will go to plot 1C and maximize the plot. Here I will put VGS on the x-axis, ID on the y-axis, and I will plot the drain current for two values of VDS, 10 millivolts and 800 millivolts. So this is the drain current at these two values. I will turn on the log scale for the y-axis to see if it's a sub-threshold current. And as you can see here, the off-current at the higher VDS is much higher than the off-current at the lower VDS, which indicates the reduction in the threshold voltage. We can repeat this procedure for different types of devices. I can load more LUTs here from the toolbar or from the menu bar. As you can see here, I have more LUTs. I have an LUT of a two transistor stack to LVT devices stacked vertically. And I also have an LUT for an NMOS super low VT device and a stack of two super low VT devices.
So please visit our website and get your free ADT personal license. Start using ADT and send us your feedback. We really want to make designers happy. Thank you and see you in the next tutorial.